The following is transcribed. Welcome to Bat Soup, the never nutritious, definitely delicious podcast dedicated to the old time radio adventures of Superman and the dynamic duo. Buckle your utility belts for lots of worry, plenty of hunches, and international cooperation galore. Before we get to today's adventure, let's pause for this important message. Uh, Gang, those swell bat soup decoder rings have been a big hit, but I've got some special insider information for you. There's a brand new swell prize coming your way to specially marked cans of bat soup soon. And that means the bat soup decoder rings are going to be phased out. But don't worry, there's still plenty of time if you haven't gotten your hands on one yet. These super stylish bat soup decoder rings are the talk of the town, and there's no limit to the fun you can have with yours. Writing secret messages and developing secret codes is just the beginning. Why, the only limitation is your imagination. So uh, ask your mom to add never nutritious, definitely delicious bat soup to her shopping list. And be sure to look for those specially marked cans with the swell prizes in them. Remember, gang, those special individually wrapped bat soup decoder rings are going away soon. So make sure you're not the only one without one. Bat soup, wherever fine podcasts are sold. Safety harness required for bandwagon jumping. And now, Bat Soup presents today's adventure, part 23 of Looking for Kryptonite, as originally broadcast on January 4th, 1946. Kellogg's Bat! The super delicious cereal presents The Adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Yes, it's Superman, for whose safety Batman and Robin are today greatly concerned. We'll join the famous pair in just a moment. But right now, here is our good friend, Dan McCullough. You know, uh, even though you fellas and girls are mighty fond of eating crisp, sunny-flavored Kellogg's Pep, you're not a bit sorry to see the box empty. Because you always know that Mom will get you some more of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal double quick. And you know that you'll be adding another of those snappy comic buttons to your collection. Maybe Orphan Annie, with her brilliant red dress and curly hair. Or her dog Sandy, looking so real that he could bark. Or even Superman himself, complete with bright blue jersey and red cape flying in the wind. Now, if it should happen to be a duplicate, you know, a button you already have, well, that's even more fun because you can trade with your pals. So whatever funny paper character it is, you're sure to have another smart-looking comic button to pin on your jacket or your dress or cap. Now, how you get these swell comic buttons is important. You don't send in any money, not even a box stop. Fact is, you can't buy them anywhere. All you do is to ask Mom to get you a good supply of Kellogg's Pep. And you'll find your prize inside the package. One of these brilliant, gleaming comic buttons. Just ask Mom for P-E-P, Pep, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now, the adventures of Superman. Fearful for his safety while Superman is alive, Mr. Jones, the cunning leader of the Crescent and Star Gang, allied himself with a powerful racketeer called the Laffer, who had one of the two stolen pieces of kryptonite the strange green glowing element which robbed Superman of his strength. Jones had a small portion of the element dissolved and dyed the color of ink and placed in an ordinary looking ink bottle. Then, posing as his twin brother, the kindly music teacher, he pretended to negotiate with Superman for the kryptonite. Suddenly, he removed the stopper of the ink bottle and as the emanations of the deadly element reached him, the man of steel became dazed and helpless. As we continue now, it is 8.30 of a dark, moonless night. And outside the apartment house in which Superman has been trapped, his friends Batman and Robin wait. Listen. Oh, I don't like this, Robin. Superman's been in there half an hour already. Stop worrying, Batman. I I can't. Well, if you have to worry, do it while we walk, will you? It's too cold to stand still on this snow. You walk if you want to. I'm going to stand right here where I can see both entrances to the apartment. Both entrances? Right, the front and the rear. 
all right? Come on, Robin. Oh, decided to walk after all? Just as far as the front entrance hall. Here, here we are. Inside, come on. Ah, we wait in here where it's warm, huh? Nope. We find the bell. We want on the wall there. And we'll ring it. Well, wait a minute, that I'm not waiting any longer. I didn't like the setup from the beginning. I didn't like it less every minute. Let's see. Now, here, here we are. Algernon Phillips. First floor flunk. And then I'll give him a ring. We can't ask him if Superman is all right. He'll think we're nuts. Well, tell him we're from the gas company or something. And these costumes? And never mind that. Why doesn't he answer? Are you sure the bell is working? Yes, yes. I can hear it through the speaking tube. It's ringing again. That's what I'm doing. Something's wrong, Robin. Come on. Where? Around the back way. Now remember, there's a transom over the back door. Say, you have got the jitters. There's a crawly feeling I always get on the back of my neck when there's danger. Will you please tell me how Superman could be in danger with Algernon on the music teacher? He's a mouse. He's Jones's brother. And Jones is a rat. Also, he's got the kryptonite. Oh, here. Here are the stairs. I see them. Oh, good. Transom's over the crack. I'll boot you up and you take a look, see. Okay, but we're wasting our time. We'll find out. All right. Up, up you go. Uh, check. Can you see? Just a minute. I... Yeah, now I can. Hey, that's funny. What? Nobody's home. You sure? Positive. I can see the whole layout. There's just a little kitchenette in the music studio. The lights are on, but Superman isn't there. Or Algernon either. Oh. All right, come on down. How do you add this up, Batman? I don't know. They couldn't have left the studio without our seeing them. I was watching both entrances. Maybe Superman left by a window and took Algernon with him. No, no. The only windows are the three in front of the studio. We would have seen them. Now, where... Wait a minute. Of course. Come on. Of course what? There's a door to the basement under these stairs. You see? Sure enough. Here. Here we... Uh Uh-oh. On the double, Robin. What gives? There's Mr. Jones in the alley. Hey, what's that? Jones, he got away. In an ambience. You sure it was Jones? Jones or his twin brother with two other men. Put someone else on a stretcher into an ambulance. Gosh, who do you suppose that was? Well, it could have been Superman. Superman? Yes. Hey, hey, here comes a truck. Hop in the middle of the alley and flag it. Good idea. We'll chase the ambulance. Right. Okay. Hop in, Robin. Hey, what's the matter? You fellas are standing in front of the truck. Hey, what kind of clothes you got on? Never mind that, buddy. Quick. Follow those twin tail lights up the alley. Hurry. Ah, no, sir. I'm a tired from a work all the day. I'm a federal event. A hundred dollars will rest you up nicely, won't it? A hundred dollars? That's right. Catch that ambulance and the hundred dollars is yours. Now get going. Oh, Papa me. Why you don't say that in the first place? Hang on and I'll step on it, will you? We got to get to that street before they're out of sight. For a hundred dollars, I'm a catch them. You betcha. If this jalopy holds together, you mean. We would draw a coffee grinder like this in a pinch, Batman. Mm, don't look a gift horse in the mouth, chum. The ambulance turned right going out the alley, didn't it? Yes. Well, better turn right here. Okay, you betcha. I don't see the ambulance. Ah. Yes, I, I hear it. Yeah, the siren, I hear it. Come on, step on it, Tony. Hey, how do you know my name's Tony? I'm psychic that way. Can't you get any more speed out of this buggy? I'm allowed to know, but I'm going to try. Hey, you hold out of your hatch. Ain't got no springs left in the body. I practically got no body left. But let her rip, Tony. Boy, what a wild ride. You got any idea where we are, Batman? Yes. This is the Mount George Road. And look, Robin. There goes the ambulance up the mountain. Uh Uh-huh. What do you suppose they're going up to that deserted neck of the woods for? I don't know. Except it's for no good. Hey, Tony. Do you think your truck can climb that mountain? My truck, she's a climber anything, even a telegraph pole. It had better. If we get stuck out here, we're done for. This is no man's land. I'm going to tell you, don't worry. This is one of fine truck, you betcha my life. I'm sure it was back in 1915. Ah, wait a minute. She's a plenty good right now. She's a guy of more... She's a... Uh-oh. Hey, what's the matter? Well, you took the words right out of my mouth, Tony. Hey, Tom, I think it's the matter with my truck. Don't look now, but I think we're sliding back downhill. Oh, no, mommy. Come on, Tony, come on. Get her started again. I'm afraid this is a dead pigeon, Batman. Hey, some things the matter with my truck. Come on! Hurry, man, hurry. That ambulance is almost out of sight. 
Oh, that's all, brother. Oh, the battery's finished. Get us a doornail. Uh-huh. Now what do we do? I'm an afternoon gentleman. I'm afraid that Tony's a truck. She's a finish. Dismayed, Batman and Robin sit in the disabled vegetable truck, watching the taillights of the ambulance disappear at the top of Mount George, and hearing a siren wail as if in grim irony. We'll return in a moment for the startling climax of today's episode. But first, here again is your announcer. You know, my pal Eddie tells me that it's pretty much a matter of pride with you fellows in the gang not to let the girls get ahead of you, and particularly when it comes to collecting comic buttons from packages of Kellogg's Pet. Of course, now, I don't have any figures to tell just how many buttons fellows and girls have collected, but I do know that I've seen a good many young ladies wearing a good many comic buttons pinned to their jacket or their dress or cap. And I've seen groups of girls in the schoolyard comparing notes on how many they've collected and trading duplicates with each other. Why, it's a real thrill to add a new funny paper character to your collection, like Uncle Walt, for instance, from Gasoline Alley, or young Smitty, the office boy, or Superman himself with his bright red cape and Superman insignia. And you know, the best part is, you don't have to spend any of your allowance to get these exciting comic buttons, and you don't send in a box stop, and you can't even buy them anywhere. They come only as exclusive prizes in packages of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pet. So how about asking Mom to get you some pep tomorrow? Get your prize from P-E-P Pep, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now back to the adventures of Superman. In a low rectangular building of stone and steel at the top of Mount George, 60 miles from Metropolis, a strange scene is taking place. A vast laboratory below a domed skylight contains a huge round furnace-like object about ten feet high with steel walls three feet thick. Just behind it is a glass-enclosed giant control board, gleaming with dials and small levers. Standing beside it, dwarfed by its size, are a short, dapper Japanese and the slender, scholarly Mr. Jones. Behind them, flanked by Tara, Mr. Jones's Hindu boy servant, and two burly men, Superman, barely conscious, lies on a stretcher on the stone floor. His eyes are glazed, and he is kept powerless to move by Tara, who passes the ink bottle containing the kryptonite solution under the Man of Steel's nose at regular intervals. Mr. Jones is speaking. Everything is ready, Professor Noshima. Yes, Mr. Jones. The Laffer's men easily conquered the few guards who are here. How about the cyclotron? It is in excellent condition. Good, good. Now, you're certain you can finish Superman? Of course, Mr. Jones. As I explained, the Ataman failed to destroy him because the nuclear fission was not properly controlled. What I have done is to prepare a moderator of graphite in the kryptonite given me by the Laffer. The moderator will slow up vision just enough to ensure a chain reaction. And that will finish Superman. Oh, completely. He will be disintegrated. You're certain of this? You can't possibly be mistaken? Not possibly. Ah, good, Professor Noshima. Excellent. With Superman dead, we will be safe. Then we will get the other piece of kryptonite from the vulture. <laughs> and you know what we will do then. Uh, I do indeed, Mr. Jones. And let's get this over with. Go to work, Noshima. Very well. You, gentlemen, play Superman in the soccer trump, please. Here, I will open the funnel for you. Hurry! Tara! Marco! Okay, Mr. Jones. Oh, oh don't. You can't do it. <laughs> the great Superman! No. This is the end of you, my no. friend. You can't do it, Jones. You can't get in there. Push, Tara. Oh. He's inside. Yes. I will now close the cyclotron. Like this. Now, if you will sit beside me at the control board, Mr. Jones, the X-ray machine will permit you to see the end of Superman. Fine, no Shima. Fine. So, we begin the fission of the kryptonite. In just one moment now, you will see... The utter destruction of Superman. His evil face twisted into one of his rare gloating smiles, Mr. Jones sits at the huge control board of the cyclotron beside the Japanese scientist, Professor Noshima, and waits for the destruction of his greatest enemy. In one moment, the terrible chain reaction of the kryptonite described by Noshima will begin. Has the Man of Steel finally come to the end of his great career on Earth? 
Fellows and girls, Monday's episode is amazing and thrilling, so don't miss it. Tune in, same time, same station, and follow the adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman. Fellows and girls, be sure to follow the adventures of Superman, brought to you every day, Monday through Friday, same time, same station, by the grand old Kellogg Company of Battle Creek. Superman is also a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Publications. Say, gang, here's some razzle-dazzle news to flash to mom. Kellogg's variety is back. So now everybody at the breakfast table can have the Kellogg's cereal he likes best. Because Kellogg's variety is that grand variety carton holding ten generous packages of six favorite Kellogg's cereals. Are they delicious? And does Kellogg's variety make breakfast fun? It's better than a grab bag because you get what you really want. Today, ask mom to get Kellogg's variety, the package that makes breakfast a picnic. And be sure to be with us on Monday for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. That was part 23 of Looking for Kryptonite from the Adventures of Superman. Thank you for listening, and be sure to subscribe to Bat Soup on your favorite podcatcher so new episodes will appear on your phone like candy in a Christmas stocking. You can now like us on Facebook, where we'll provide links to new episodes as they hit YouTube, and we'll give you a behind-the-scenes peek at Bat Soup Goings On. That's going to wrap things up for this episode of Bat Soup, but be sure to tune in next time when you'll hear Mr. Jones say... Why didn't you close the door? You know how sensitive I am to drafts. Now I'll have to spray my throat. (laughs) 